At this machine in Fresno, 18-year-old Greg Davies scored 15 million points, played 31 hours on one quarter. You stood here for 31 hours? No, I sat down. We met at a processing plant. Um, she, I was dumping berries into the machine, and she was picking the berries out that were bad. And I would stare at her and make googly eyes. <laughs> yeah. I'm 21-year-old Robin, and I've been playing Counter-Strike for some time now under the handle Ice right, Bear. Which team should I pick, Terrace or Counter-Terrace, huh? Ice Bear is polar bear in German, and I just I chose the name after a song by Groove Zone called Ice Bear. Yeah, so it's just a brutality of, of uh, Counter-Strike. One set of players uh, takes on the roles of terrorists, and the other set uh, takes on uh, the counter-terrorist role, and they go through these different, you know, hostage rescue and bomb defusal scenarios. We first started playing Counter-Strike in college at UC Davis, my freshman year. There was a big thing on college campuses. Uh, people played it between the different dorm halls and things like that. It was really competitive. People played for money and this and that. Oh, all this trick in the book. A friend gave it to me and was like, hey, you know, let's play, you know, get good at this, and we're gonna play these people in our dorms for money. Counter-Strike started as a, as a mod, as an amateur-made variation uh, for, for a popular game called Half-Life. Half-Life was uh, Valve's deb debut product. Uh, it launched in November of 1998, and uh, it was a first-person shooter or an action game experience that really brought story and context and association with other characters into the genre. First, when we were married, he was on the computer quite often, and being the setup, he was sitting on the computer and the TV was over here, so I'd be just pretty much sleeping on the couch basically every night and then going to bed when he went to bed. Everyone is always saying that they love Counter-Strike because it's so real. It's not real. I mean, it's not like real war. There are no civilians who are getting, you know, killed and maimed. It's like this clean world that um, is not very real. <laughs> the big deal about knife and um, I guess it's just that you have to get that close to a person. I mean, you have to be within the arm's length to slash them, and they have guns shooting at your head. It's just this sort of, you know, I was able to get that close to you to kill you before you could get me and stuff like that. So people, people don't like getting knifed a lot. As a terrorist, spend all your time being chatty and constantly try to reopen negotiations with a counter-terrorist. Word on the street is Speakeasy paid for the guys from TSO to get BMWs, and they bought them apartments, and they pay them to play Counter-Strike. That's, that's what I hear. Some ideas have a momentum of their own. Back in 96 and 95 and then in 97, plan parties that were taking place. People were not there for entertainment, but they were there for competition. And it just, I realized this was you a sport. And I, we have met before through the magic of a moment in cyberspace. A LAN is a local area network, and a LAN party is where a, a, a bunch of guys, and I say guys because it is mostly a male thing, uh, they, they get together and they play these, uh, these multiplayer games together. Beyond the game, through the portal into cyberspace, we have come to decide our fate. There's some guilt associated with the fact that it's, in some respect, it's time wasted, you know, idle time. The teams are here, the spirit is right, we're connected now. But then again, everybody needs an outlet. The Cyber Athlete Professional League, or the CPL, is uh, one of several organizations trying to bring a, a real legitimacy to the act of, of playing these kinds of games competitively. Come